of a critical pedagogy, advocating a pedagogy with a new relationship between the teacher, the student, and society. Freddy developed an approach to education that links the identification of issues with the positive actions for change and development. While Freddy's original work was in adult literacy, his approach led us to think about how we can read the society around us, uh, says Institute Paulo Freire. For Carlos Scolari and Riano Mata, applying the Paulo Freire method does not mean messing around in the classroom. On the contrary, it represents a serious opportunity to learn the practice of loving and being solidari so solidarity. Paulo Freire makes clear that only in fullness of this act of loving in its existence, in its practice, is the true solidarity. For people who still don't know him, Paulo Freire is the patron of Brazilian education, the Brazilian who has been awarded honorary doctorates most often, and the author of the book Pedagogy of the Press, considered one of the most quoted books in social science in the world, and his works were included in UNESCO program called Memory of the World. However, he's better known as the boy who reads the world, or utopian wanderer. Right. Uh, let me so, let me talk about the international panel. In this uh, Freudian dialogue, the panelists will debate the process of humanization in education in light of a knowledge produced by popular movements and the colonial thoughts. This is a partnership between University of East Anglia, Univers uh, Federal University of São Paulo, and Landless Works Movement, the MST part of a two weeks program that will celebrate Paulo Freire's centenary at University of Cambridge and be held today, right now. That's what's going on right now. Our aim is to turn this international panel into a place for dialogue. It's like a two way street. On the one hand, active participation of the audience. On the other hand, interaction between the panelists, um, audience based on knowledge produced in popular movement. As Paulo Freire points point out, in such a necessary encounter, there are no ignorant absolutes, nor wise absolutes. There are men and women who, in communion, seek to know more. In order to do that, we have decided to use one of the pedagogical practices developed by MST, Landless Works Movement, based on solidarity and collective identity. It's called Mystica, which embodies artistic presentation, including performance, plastic arts, and music. The artistic elements constitute mobilizing forces of the sense of belonging and establishment of distinctions between us and them. Songs, dance, theater contribute to identify formation. They are the expression of a collective feeling that unites identities, strengths their spirits of resistance and struggle. Mystica draws on the Christian theology generally, and specifically on the practice of a Christian-based communities associated with liberation theology, which are the key in the emergency of the landless works movement. So we're gonna have a short opening and ending video where you can experience what does mystica mean in practical terms. Mm -hmm. After the opening, the panelists will have a dialogue where the talk does the talk. First of all, they will place Paulo Freire's work historically and epistemological and cultural political terms. And then they will look into the new pedagogical practice experience within and outside academia. Finally, the panelists will discuss the new challenges, possibilities for a humanized education where Freddy's idea of a netto viable opens up spaces to reveal 
the concrete implications for society and education when it comes to struggles for liberation. Bear in mind what Paulo Freire has taught all of us, no one liberates anyone. No one liberates himself alone. People are liberating communion. So it's not a mission or model because it's an option, orientation is a political project. Before we play the video, I'd like to give Gibson, a brief... Gibson, desculpe, eu te interromper. Não está Sorry. sendo transmitido o áudio em português em nenhuma das, dos links em português no YouTube. Só aparece o áudio, só, só são transmitidos os áudios nos links em inglês. Então, aparece em inglês, tudo bem, mas o pessoal no Brasil não está tendo acesso em português. Gain travel support, I, uh, I eu já, já falei, mas não, não sei o que está acontecendo, por isso que eu te interrompi. Right, but I, I must carry on, otherwise it'll be like running against the clock, isn't it? É que eles não vão ver o vídeo, não vão ter acesso a nada, né? Sueli, eu acho que uma alternativa é colocar o link do Zoom lá no chat do YouTube, para quem quiser ouvir em português, entrar aqui e aí acessar. Ah, Okay. Okay. Obrigada. Okay. Thank you, Alexandre, for your contribution. <laughs> We're just trying to um, uh, fix some uh, technical issues. It happens um, every single online transmission. It's, it happens every single time. So I do apologize for that. Uh, but going back to the, what I was saying, I'm going to go through the biography of the panelists before we play the video, the opening video, the Mystica. Okay? Maria de Jesus dos Santos Gomes. Uh, she's from Landless Work Movement, agriculture settled by the agrarian reform in the Bernardo Marin settlement in Russas, Ceará. Graduated in pedagogy from Unidu um, in, in the south of Brazil, especially in education, the countryside, and development from UND, Federal University of Brasilia. And also, she's a specialist in educational work and social movements from the Joaquim Venancio School. Uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, leader of the education sector of MST in Ceará, of the national executive of the education sector of the MST. Um, Dr. Mariangela Graciano from Federal University of Sao Paulo. She's a professor in the education department of Federal University of Sao Paulo, whose research focus on education of young people, adults, and have been deprived of freedom as well as uh, popular education. The courses she delivers on a youth and adult education, diversity in education practices in the school of uh, people deprived of liberty and social movements, youth and adult education. She's involved in extramural projects such as observatory for human rights and recording in progress. Incarcerate population of each she's a member and she coordinates the citizenship school of Ademar Pereira, uh, Pedreira Town, the department. She's a member of the research group Freedom Studies and UNESCO Chair in Applied Research for Education and Prison. And finally, the last but not the least important panelist, Dr. Spiros Temelis from the University of East Anglia. He's Associate Professor in Education at the University of East Anglia. His research and publication focuses on social mobility, minorities in education, especially gypsy Roman travelers, widening participation and social movements. He has published a monography, Social Change Education in Greece, a study in classes struggle dynamics and several papers, international journals. The latest book is the title Critical Reflections on the Language of a Now Liberalism in Education, Danger Words and Discourses of Possibility. Now, uh, I would like to play, uh, after all the presentation of the panelists, I would like to play the video, Missica, the opening video. Please, um, guys from the IT support, if you can do that, that would be very much appreciated. You are now watching a Mystica, and the testimonials will be translated uh, into, will be put into English. Quem vive da 
da floresta, dos rios e dos mares, de todos os lugares onde o sol abre uma festa, tem a sua. Teaching and rural settlements like Incra or near the city hall, for example, we can do it. We have what it takes to act accordingly to our social needs. Yeah. Rural education, ensino fundamental, which is Brazilian middle school, rural settlement schools make it possible for learners to become critical beings capable of reading and writing not only words but the world around them. As learners become aware of their reality, they are likely to become agents of their own reality feeling as if they belong to this reality, they commit to this reality as we understand that this reality is not very different from what we live now. Rural schools make it possible for the youth to understand their value and to make them meaningful in the world they live in. Aconteceu num certo dia, hora da Ave Maria, onde o verso viu gerar. No princípio, o verbo se fez fogo, nem Atlas tinha um globo, mas tinha nome ou lugar. Era a terra, terra. The month of September reminds us how uh, of Paulo Freire and how his ideas and work um, have influenced and contributed to the beauty and uh, the organization of the Landless Rural Workers Movement, uh, which is the MST. Uh, this movement uh, organizes communities, uh, organizes people and makes communities uh, who are aware of their freedom and their role and participation in the building of this new being in this new society. Uh, 
Paulo Freire has left in his legacy uh, with a lot of food for thought. One of them being the fact that he is quite naive to expect that the nominant classes would develop an educational system that allowed the nominated classes to critically reflect upon the existence as existing social injustice and result. That is why, comrades, we have to continue our struggle for an education that promotes a process of liberation and emancip emancipation. Let's celebrate Paulo Freire, his legacy and his struggle. Thank you very much for your participation on the talk. I can see people are really enjoying. Now we can uh, say to everyone, we know a little bit more about Mystica. How does it impact on us? Such a transformational way. It's unbelievable. I'm speechless. I uh, should thank you, MSC, once more for such amazing video. Now uh, we're going to get the panelists involved in the talk with this dialogue. Let the talk does the talk. And I'd like to turn to Maria de Jesus, please. Are you Maria de Jesus there? Maria de Jesus, please. Hello? Um, Hello? Estão me escutando? Uh, yes. Can you, can you can you hear me? Maria de Jesus, can you hear me? Maria de Jesus has just. We are trying to uh, get connected to Maria de Jesus. Então, com alegria. It's. It's. Um, I. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome everyone who's been taking part of this event. Who, um, which uh, is organized to celebrate the uh, centenary of Paulo Freire, uh, taking into account his project of dehumanization and freedom, which happens in the social movements and the educational uh, movements that we organized. Paulo Freire is being celebrated in the centenary of his birth by every one of us who are part of the social movements, especially by bringing all the vigor of his uh, work his example as a human being and his experience as an educator. And as part of the Landless Workers Movement, we unite to all the social uh, movements in our country and uh, also with international mo social movements in order to celebrate and to remember and to pay homage to the memory uh, when organizing um, book work, book circles 
in order to remember Paulo Freire in rural schools in Brazil, which uh, uh, are located in settlements in Brazil, we have grown, uh, we have planted a uh, hundred uh, trees uh, around the schools in order to uh, value or to pay homage to Paulo Freire's work. But based on this, uh, on the reality which we live in, uh, which is surrounded by the COVID pandemic here in Brazil. We um, are organizing uh, different uh, actions. We are organizing different actions right after the pandemics, which revolve uh, to the idea of uh, organizing the literacy program for uh, the education in our settlements. Our main aim is to provide uh, education in high school level, which is the last uh, uh, educational segment level here in Brazilian, here in Brazil. Uh, for us in the movement, uh, it really means a lot to um, think of education and its importance. We, within this economical crisis we live in, we are getting ourselves organized uh, to build. We have been facing some loss in terms of, we have been uh, fighting and struggling for our loss uh, especially because we have seen a lot of oppression from the government to uh, the people and the popular classes because of the capitalism. We have noticed that uh, capitalism and this uh, and this this strength it impacts our own uh, survive, uh, survival in the planet and in, in, in nature and in Brazil. Our social movements, we have been struggling or we have been going, uh, we have, we understand that food is not uh, a means of change, is not, uh, we, food, water and earth and places to live are not something that can be sold or can be used as trades in the working class, which is one of the challenges in the working class. Paulo Freire has taught us that uh, reality is what, exa is what exa uh, that reality is what exactly we are living in. Paulo Freire says the inevitable, which is the uh, viable unheard of, is something that we have to organize and we have to build on. We have to be attentive to the historical project, uh, which involves social work, which um, is going to help us get organized and make it better or make it more effective, our work as a society. Paulo Freire has taught us how to esperançar, which is not necessarily only to wait for um, things to happen, but to get... Bom dia a todas as pessoas. Yes, and making your connection between your talk and then Maria de Jesus. Uh, you're going to talk about the uh, legacy of Paulo Freire as a resistance, but bear in mind two questions, any other uh, historical facts and the difficulties for these new, new historical facts. Okay, thank you for, your, for joining us. Muito obrigada. Parabéns. Maria, many thanks for the opportunity of being here. And thank you for the teachers from UNIFESP who have indicated me 
in order to take place in this event. Maria de Jesus, welcome, Maria de Jesus, welcome everyone. Uh, Maria de Jesus, we really liked the idea of the inédito viável, the viable unheard of, meaning if we get ourselves, if we understand that we are all we are all human beings capable of making and producing knowledge, and this makes us get ourselves recognized as people, and this reflects upon our reality and the way that we reflect upon um, our reality. This reality and the use of the viable and hard of make it possible for us to constitute ourselves as, our be as beings and not simply beings who serve others. So I'd like to think, I'd like to ask, what are the possibilities of making uh, inéditos viáveis possible? Paulo Freire says that we conquer inédito viável when we get to a situation and based on a rigorous methodology and comprehension of the reality which surrounds us, uh, we, get, we gather all the, the knowledge around us. Um, we do this in a group of people in communion. We get to different alternatives and different possibilities of understandings and because of that we might have some sort of challenges and i'd like to understand what sorts of challenges that are posed so what is the role of university in the building of the viable and unheard of and who would be or who would, would our partners be in this way in this struggle to make it uh, the viable and heard of possible. Here in Brazil, uh, we have been having a very unique situation, especially because the Paulo Ferreira's image is uh, being connected to groups of people who might not necessarily understand his idea. And um, his image has been identified uh, uh, Paulo Freire's image is identified with the oppressed, uh, with those who have, for the very first time in history, been recognized as their own subject of, uh, of their own lives, right? So, Paulo, Freire, uh, Paulo Freire's ideas helped us understand minorities as part of the society and um, make these minorities be part of a whole society and a bigger society. When Paulo Freire and Paulo Freire's ideas, uh, it's a way of resistance, right? A way of resistance uh, and fight for minorities. So, Basically, based on Paulo Freire's ideas, how can we make uh, this moment a re moment for reflection upon action in order to make uh, the viable and heard of possible? Now, um, I must turn to Spiros from the University of East Anglia. And Spiros, please, I would like to make some connections between your, your first impressions on the historical facts and the talk of uh, Maria de Jesus and Maria Angela. Please, uh, right. given, given the significance of Freire's work, uh, what's the main lesson you learn, and how can we look at this from another perspective? Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, organizers, for inviting me. Thanks all the participants for making it today. I've been trying to switch off my camera so I don't destabilize any further my connection. So I'll grab this opportunity now that technology is behaving. Um, I think it's very, very timely that we are talking about Freire. And it's very timely for many reasons. First, because um, there's quite a lot of talk about um, 
uh, the crisis, the um, health crisis. And before that, there was a lot of talk about the economic and financial crisis. <clears throat> in other words, in the last uh, 12, 13 years or so, we have been immersed in conversations about crisis. And just when we thought that the crisis is something temporary, passing, and transient, we are caught up in a new cycle of crisis. So there's nothing more permanent than the crisis, in which case we're not talking about the crisis, we're talking about the collapse of a system. This system is capitalism. Now, why is Freire important? Freire important is very important in the at this point in time because he gave us not just the language and the tools with which to be able to understand the crisis and the origins of the crisis, but also ideas that we can put into practice to to, to mitigate the effect of the crisis and and um, find our way out of it. Um, so I will focus my um, uh, this part of my intervention on the UK and especially UK education and, and UK higher education. I think Freire's importance um, cannot be emphasized enough because um, we increasingly have um, dialogue in our classrooms. We increasingly have dialogue between um, those of us who work in education and different sectors of society um, and we increasingly have um, um, a dis mountain and disturbance of the dominant paradigm and i'll give you a few examples um what i mean by that there has been a lot of intellectual production a lot of books and articles published um utilize various ideas and thoughts and tools. And I think this is quite appropriate. This is quite right. Um, but this there has also been, and I think this is the other beauty of uh, Freire's contribution, there have been experimentations with different forms of doing education, what Freire would, would call uh, ways of being, not just acting, being. Being, being with the world. So um, we have, even in the UK, not the most uh, radical of places in the world, but we have had over the last 10, 15 years or so, social movements, student movements in higher education, for instance, organized um, over the increasing tuition fees and have since made uh, various contributions to the intellectual and public debate in the UK. Um, so we had um, experimentations and explorations of different alternative uh, forms of education. For instance, there's now a well-established co uh, cooperative university. There's different um, open and free universities. Um, ways of organizing higher education that try to uh, disrupt the dominant narrative, which in the UK is um, um, very top-down, very capitalist, and uh, almost totally privatized. Higher education fees, as most of you know, are the highest in Europe and uh, some of the highest in the world. Um, so what do we get with Freire that we didn't have before? We um, got pedagogic innovation, got dialogue in education, Importantly, we got prefiguration, what I just uh, described, what I just discussed, uh, different forms of organizing education. We also got dialogue with the movements. A very good example is the former Labour Party leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Um, his movement, uh, the example is, is the, the former wind power Labour in the Labour Party, Party leader, largely Corbyn, with um, um, some of the his movement. Uh, the example is the, the former wind uh, power. So um, we also got new epistemologies. We got this disruption of the dominant narrative that um, all the terms that we can use to describe movement, to describe progress, they come, you know, from the dominant paradigm, which is a colonialist paradigm. So we've got new ways of talking about things, and that really became clear in the Black Lives Matter. We've got 
Um, so talking about really, um, really good became clear higher education life struggle to think with a higher education institution right now in the UK, which has not embraced the idea of decolonizing the curriculum, if not think other with a higher um, education institution um, right now in the of UK. its um, operation, other facets of its activity. Um, and don't forget that, you know, for uh, critical pedagogues, critical educators, that has been a dream come true. Of course, it doesn't stop here, but being able, you know, to, to be um, in the lion's mouth, as it were, and use the language that Freire, you know, was using, is something that we should not underestimate. We were not able to have this conversation with university management about decolonizing our curriculum, about um, white curriculum, about um, um, dominant paradigms and so on. So this is happening. I think uh, to a large extent, um, this has to be credited to uh, the processes that have been created by the radicalism, the freshness of, of Freire's um, contribution. So why is Freire's thinking important? Um, it's also be important because of the challenges facing humanity, climate change, and big tech during and because of the pandemic, and of course the collapse of capitalism, or rather the transformation of capitalism to something that um, is is not neoliberalism anymore. And I think we we could have this conversation. So, thanks very much again. Um, I hope we can extend this conversation by bringing in experiences of um, our of our audience and um, trying to prefigure the new stage of social relations we, we we're moving into thanks very much thank you Spiros, for your first impressions now i'm gonna hand over to sueli she's gonna lead the second round of questions and in this time um please sueli if you'd like to step in Yes, thank you, Gibson. Uh, first of all, we are going to, well, first of all, thank you for this partnership with Cambridge University, MST, and the University of East Anglia. Um, I'm calling Maria Jesus, first of all. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about experience, um, uh, uh, some uh, uh, information on the experience that the, the, the landless movement uh, has. And we have two questions, if you address them, please, Maria Jesus. Uh, what uh, might be the falling uh, to ask that the MST should be asking? Sorry, what questions might be, uh, be failing to ask uh, and that the MST has been asking? So perhaps the, the, the broader community or uh, the universities or other contexts, they have been failing to ask some questions that you have been asking yourselves already. And the other question is, what factors make these questions a big challenge, questions you've been asking yourselves? Thank you. Maria Jesus, please. Maria Jesus. Is she there? Maria Jesus, talvez a interpretação não tenha entrado. Você quer que eu fale em português? Sim, porque eu não consegui. É, eu não Maria estou... Maria Jesus has been having... A interpretação não entrou, né? Não, para mim não. Ok, então esse segundo eixo é a parte da, das experiências, né? A experiência... Sueli is now uh, using Portuguese to address two questions to Maria de Jesus, one of the representatives from MST. Professor Sueli Fidago is repeating the two questions Gibson. Uh, she has already... Uh, Asked. Uh, to the general public, I'm just um, asking, I asked the same questions in Portuguese. 
Maria Ângela, na primeira, só, só me repete o início da primeira, por favor. Pois não. É, os, as perguntas, quer dizer, eu, a gente acredita que o MST tem se feito várias perguntas ao longo desses anos, e essas perguntas têm pautado as ações do MST, né? São perguntas que muitas vezes outros contextos, como as universidades, as escolas, outros, outros coletivos, outros contextos sociais, não têm se feito. E a gente queria ouvir um pouquinho de você, que perguntas são essas, quer dizer, que pautam, que perguntas têm pautado as experiências do MST e que muitas vezes não são é, perguntas que, que vocês acreditam que outros contextos têm se feito. É, gostaria de partilhar que o MST é o primeiro movimento social, é o primeiro movimento camponês no Brasil que completa 37 anos. Todos os outros movimentos camponeses do nosso país, eles foram, né, eles foram é, massacrados, eles não duraram é, 15 anos todos tiveram uma duração com menos de 15 anos. E o MST, eu, eu acredito assim que ele, para nós, ele é uma grande escola, nós temos aprendido isso no MST, o MST é uma grande escola e o coletivo é um grande educador. E, e o nosso movimento na... acreditava assim, eu digo, como será que nós vamos resistir no início, né? No início dessa pandemia. E nós nos recriamos. Olha, o movimento, ele criou o Plano Nacional Planta Árvores, Produzir Alimentos Saudáveis, com uma meta para nós, famílias assentadas e acampadas, de plantar 100 milhões de árvores no, nos nossos biomas. Árvores, a maior parte é, é árvores nativas e frutíferas. Veja né, que ação. Plantar solidariedade. Nós temos nossas áreas, nossas terras conquistadas, nossas terras livres do latifúndio, do, do agronegócio, dos agrotóxicos. Nós vamos produzir solidariedade, plantando solidariedade. Gente, isso não é... Não é não é pequeno, plantar solidariedade na terra livre conquistada pela reforma agrária. Nós estamos fazendo isso no nosso país, nós já distribuímos mais de 5 mil toneladas de alimentos e vamos seguir produzindo muitos alimentos agora para o Natal. Mas nós não queremos, nós queremos dizer, inclusive para as famílias pobres das periferias do nosso país, que a reforma agrária é uma saída para o trabalho e para a fome. E é nesse sentido que o nosso movimento, em 2022, retomará grandes ocupações no nosso país, com as pessoas que estão desempregadas e com as pessoas que estão passando fome. E não são poucas, são milhões. São milhões. Milhões diante de uma política perversa né, que prioriza o lucro e não a vida. Então, nesse sentido, nós temos também nos perguntado muitas. Olha, eu estou no movimento, né? Tenho uma alegria de estar no movimento. To capitalism and money to be part of the movement. Uh, we know, uh, as part of the movement, uh, the good, bads and the, the good and the bad times of being part of this movement. Um, we, uh, as part of the uh, workers' movement, we are only a part of it, and we are gathering in order to struggle and to survive in such a difficult time here in Brazil in terms of um, economy. When uh, a different challenge that we have is how we can work or how can we resist against uh, some of the ideas of our 
Brazilian President Bolsonaro and how to fight uh, for our rights. And we use Paulo Freire's idea in order to help us understand and to get ourselves organized in order to fight for this. Um, I have already, uh, I have read uh, the Pedagogy of the Oppressed twice this year in order to search or in order to understand, uh, based on Freire's idea, uh, the, to understand, to critically understand the moment which, he, which we are living. And this makes it is, it's, uh, for me to understand what we are uh, facing here in Brazil uh, and to understand the ideas of capitalism and the power of capitalism and the way capitalism makes people uh, subserve things, um, dehumanize the condition of beings. And he... Um, uh, the we uh, we have been facing a lot of deaths because of feminicide and and for the LGBTQI plus community who suffer in our country the death of so many uh, origin people the landless workers and the social injustice and le lack of uh, we are facing a moment in which we are facing a moment in which uh, we are facing a moment in which it is very important for us to work with uh, popular communities to reorganize our processes, our internal processes in order to fight for our rights. Especially because if we want to uh, uh, get out of these uh, zones in which we feel unequal to others, it is, it is really hard. It is very important for social movements in Brazil, such as the MST, to get organized and to be part of this community which in we fight for our rights. All the oppressed and the excluded and the ones who are being suffered uh, from this uh, social inequalities and injustice, finding these movements the ability to feel uh, agents of their, their, their reality. Uh, the last word cannot be something from the, the from other people or based on the capitalism, but we as a community have the right to give it, give it a say, give a final word on uh, what we want. Uh, the, we have been dominated our media and our our media and uh, is is not the quality of Brazilian media is not necessarily helpful um, and it's dominated for it's dominated by five different things in Brazil. It's not democratic. It only tells one version of the story, and every time they talk about the popular classes. Uh, they show um, uh, rebellions and they show uh, criminal. Uh, they show they show crimes. Uh, they do not show the positive aspects of the communities. And um, we, as part of the community, we want. We ask ourselves: How is it that we can get people together in a moment where everybody is so fragmented? Uh, why is it that we, uh, the questions are, what is it that put us together? What is it that unites us as a class, as, as Brazilians? 
And this is one thing that we take into account when we want to think our policies. Uh, one of these things, um, we are very happy to be part of this uh, initiative, which we also believe that is a way to help spread the word of the things and the advances that we have organized as a social movement. The uh, schooling system is very important, not only for uh, rural areas, but for everyone who uh, wants to take part in this revolution in order to make a society, uh, to make to make a better society. The society we live in requires requires different ways of thinking and different ways of living in the society, which are not necessarily related to the gathering of money. It's not about building things. We have to understand uh, our reality and the the social aspects of the different classes and the struggle between these classes. We do hope that within this, we do hope that this uh, left wing, uh, we do hope that we strengthen the left wing part of uh, our forces in order to go against the right wing aspects and politics that have been um, that have been uh, ruling our country. Um, agora, now I'm going to call uh, Professor Maria Angela Graciano from UNIFESP. She's going to talk a little bit about Freire's work at UNIFESP, the, the, the work based on Paulo Freire at UNIFESP. Um, a little bit about the, the teacher initial education, uh, the project of uh, the, the conference that is being held at UNIFESP, Paulo Freire, 100 anos de uh, Praxis Libertadora, Paulo Freire, 100 years of liberating praxis, uh, and a little bit about educational practices in Brazilian in the Brazilian prison system. And Maria Angela, we would like to ask you to, as you talk about these topics, to address two questions. The first one is, how could the understanding of these experiences be distorted in the era, in the era of post-truth? And what factors make this a difficult problem to deal with uh, if you do that and at the same time um, try to address a little bit of what uh, Maria Jesuit has just said uh, it would be great thank you Maria Angela você terá acesso thank you uh... I'm going to share some of the experiences that we have been having uh, at UNIFESP based on the ideas of Paulo Freire. Um, I'll try to address the questions proposed by Professor Sueli. And Um, the first action is the uh, possibility of, uh, is the reading of Paulo Freire's work. And it was, it's, uh, it's a course, which is part of the curriculum of the pedagogy course at UNIFESP. So it's, uh, the pedagogy course uh, uh, is, some, is a course that, um, trains teachers for uh, elementary uh, education. Uh, the, pedag the pedagogy course, uh, the, the ones um, 
who attend the pedagogy course also uh, also attend other different courses uh, at UNIFESP as well. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, the, these students enroll in the pedagogy course at, Paulo, uh, at UNIFESP is because they want to read Paulo Freire and they want to become a bit more familiarized with his ideas. And I wonder where this, uh, this curiosity about Paulo Freire's ideas come from, understanding that these, uh, these students, they are, they are young and they were not necessarily that much uh, encouraged to, to read Paulo Freire in school, for example. So students, uh, students uh, who look for us, they have already experienced some of the theory of Paulo Freire because they were part of social movements. Uh, some of them, uh, these students, they come from families uh, whose relatives, moms, for example, they are already part of the social movements and these, um, this, these women, these moms from these families, uh, because of the idea of Paulo Freire, they share that with their families and they become a bit more interested in the ideas of Paulo Freire. There is a, uh, also a movement from the technical um, school here in Sao Paulo. Uh, teachers from these uh, regular schools, they uh, annually organized a week based on Paulo Freire's ideas and research. And when they get to university, they want to know a bit more about Paulo Freire and his idea. His idea and his legacy has become so big in this course that uh, there was one semester in which students would read five different books uh, by Paulo Freire. And this is a great thing, especially because uh, public universities such as UNIFESP have been suffering uh, pressure from the government by saying that we do a lot of balbutia, which is rebelling against uh, people and other institutions. We have read and discussed different uh, books uh, by Paulo Freire, and I'm also inviting Professor uh, inviting Maria Jesus to help and join our discussion next time we read the pedagogy of the oppressed. Um, we are not necessarily by by uh, working with uh, Paulo Freire books and ideas. We are not uh, dominating or we are not. Um, uh, making it uh, some sort of banking education with his work. Instead, we are uh, giving students the opportunity to critically read and reflect upon Paulo Freire's idea because we want to stimulate our students to produce knowledge based on his idea. There is no problem in uh, criticizing Paulo Freire's idea. In fact, Paulo Freire himself said that there was no problem in doing so. Uh, the thing is, uh, we have to criticize uh, the idea, um, but it is important that whenever we want to criticize Paulo Freire's idea or any other idea, we have to make it scientific. We have to consider true arguments uh, and solid arguments in order to do so. We have uh, constituted a study group and different uh, professors from different, uh, different professors were in, involved or were organized or were in, involved. And we have organized also a Congress based uh, Paulo Freire at UNIFESP. Uh, throughout the year, we have started uh, preparing around May, uh, 11 university teachers, professors, and many students got together uh, in order to organize this homage to Paulo Freire. Uh, basically, every week we have an, a special activity 
to celebrate Paulo Freire's ideas and his legacy. We have already involved many different uh, people from Brazil and from different countries, other professors, teachers from regular schools, and also students at UNIFESP. Now I'm going to share an experience based on um, Paulo Freire's experience. We want to continue permeating a horizontal relationship in between uh, students and, and, and teachers. When we were discussing uh, the visual identity for this, um, this, this Congress and this homage to Paulo Freire, one of the students said something. Um, maybe uh, creating or thinking of a, 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 um, a contest for uh, creating this design doesn't actually make sense, uh, especially if we take into account uh, Freire's idea. Based on Freire's idea, we cannot encourage competition or students going against the other. So because of this student contribution, we have uh, changed our approach and we organized a collaborative uh, group in which this design was created by a group of people, by a community. So meaning we were not doing or preparing something to somebody, but we were doing something together with others and with others. Um, and well, as for the, the, the third moment, I'm going to talk about uh, my Brazilian prison system and the, the work in this prison systems. So we have organized this group involving different professors and students and uh, some specific organization. We have been uh, working, we have been organizing reading circles with these uh, students from the prison system here in Brazil. We have uh, been organizing some uh, experiments or uh, experimentation with these uh, teenagers. We have organized some exhibitions based on uh, the production, based on the reading cycles by those learners in the prison system. Uh, Paulo Freire is, is part of this experience because we had the chance to go to the prison, get to know the reality of these learners, and to, because we understood a bit more of this reality, we managed to organize this work. Uh, in Brazil, we have around 800 people uh, who are within our prisons. Uh, with, and, and we sometimes forget that those who are in there for a period of time uh, are not necessarily, we might not understand them as people. And it's very important that we understand and we get to know they are rea reality in order to work with it. Taking, taking into account these learners' reality, it's not simple to understand uh, the, the, the system, the, the prison system here in Brazil, which uh, um, frees, uh, which um, as we get to know uh, the reality in prisons and when we think together with these people and among our uh, team of teachers, it is possible for us to uh, think of some possibilities. So first of all, we have, uh, we commit to unveil uh, what our possibilities are Second, uh, to think about teacher education in a way that uh, we help teachers understand the social stigma that some group of minorities, some groups and some minorities face on a regular basis. 
And last but not least, uh, every uh, educational practice, uh, meaning go to our prisons and produce knowledge together with these students who are within prison system, uh, we are humanizing all the ones involved in the project, those who are there having lessons and also the ones who are uh, leading the process. Um, and then Sueli asks, but this, um, isn't this, can, can we stick to the true meaning of this practice in a post-truth era? What are the mechanisms that uh, the oppressors use to maintain the society the way it is? Uh, Paulo Freire would not say things such as fake news and post-truth era, but Paulo Freire would say things such as uh, propaganda, which is um, show an idea, show a slogan, and uh, state something as true, truth without uh, giving the possibility for reflection. So, if you think of all the criticism towards universities, uh, towards public universities, this is also a way to, to, to show um, how we are being oppressed. So one way of going against this is by making a dialogue, proposing dialogues. So every time, one way of solving this or one way of making this helper is by is, uh, uh, making this happen is by establishing a dialogue with the community with the society by establishing a dialogue with social movements and opening the doors of our universities to those who have never considered the possibility of taking part uh, or becoming one of students in the society in the in the universities understand the their possibilities with the graduation course Paulo Freire says that education illuminates reality, and there are many ways of illuminating this reality. There are many different shades uh, of illuminating reality, such as light or bulbs and lamps, and also small little uh, insects that, that shine uh, at night. So whatever is it that, uh, whatever the way or the possibility that we have to illuminate reality, it is worth doing and it's worth taking. So establishing a dialogue with society is crucial and very important for improvement. I'd like you to, I'd like to ask you please to read the chat because there is some, um, there are some people asking for further information about the group, the study group and also um, this, the 100 years of liberating praxis. Uh, now we go to Spiros. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about the Taiwanese sunflower movement, law clinics in Chechnya, uh, secondary school teachers in Greece and popular movements in Fortaleza, Brazil. So, and we'd like to ask you, Spiros, if you could answer two questions as well. Um, do we need to rethink how we are labeling these experiences? If not, why not? And if you think we do, then please give some examples. Great, yes, thanks very much. I think this is, um, it's really hard to follow Maria Angela and Maria de Jesus after um, all they've said, all they've said. So um, I'm gonna take you on a small trip, not around the world, around a few places where I've had the opportunity to, um, to be part of the change that um, took place there. And that change was inspired and was informed by Freirean ideas. Um, and as a way of introduction, um, what might connect um, a student movement by Freirean, Freirean um, ideas? Um, 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 um
in in Chechnya or Peter's movement in in Greece um, is no other than Freire's work. Yes, um, in, um, um, I think clinic. what um, mm -hmm. really connects all of these different um, applications of Freire's ideas is the versatility of his work and the freshness, as I said earlier, of his ideas. Um, it's not a surprise that uh, a lot of my students have found inspiration in Freire and a lot of uh, many other people still find inspiration in Freire's ideas because um, of the possibility to apply them um, in different contexts because of the lack of prescriptiveness. This is not a recipe for success. We all know that um, there is a great deal of experimentation, trial and error, from theory to action and reflection to reflection. And all over again, action, theory, reflection, it's, it's not easy. And many people um, um, drop the effort halfway through. Um, but I think what gives his ideas this um, impetus is um, the fact that they're open, they're dialogical, dialogical non-dogmatic and they can his ideas can be applied from the bottom all the way up to the top in relation to the one is student uh movement um i had a student on the ma um which i have had the pleasure of directing for the last six seven years here at the university of east anglia it's an ma on la, la, uh, sorry learning pedagogy and assessment and I have a, a module there which I revamped and I did a very strong critical education, alternative education, democratic education element to it. And I remember three, four years ago when we um, were discussing fair, I had a student, uh, Tao is her name from Taiwan, who um, stood up and said, well, look, um, I think there's something here that we need to discuss in relation to Taiwan. Long story short, we got immersed in the conversation how much of what students were doing during the 2014 student movement, also known as the Sunflower Movement, how much of that um, was um, could be analyzed, was part of what Freire had in mind, so we started the session with ended up in, in us presented, uh, uh, presenting our work and publishing this work um, and discussing what students try to do there. In a nutshell, we had uh, hundreds of students occupying the parliament equivalent of Taiwan. Taiwan is a very complicated country. All countries are complicated, but we have had uh, British occupation. We, had, we have had Chinese. Some people would not like, <clears throat> excuse me, to call it occupation, but um, influence. And as of recently, we had many voices calling for the independence, um, Taiwan, um, Taiwanese Republic, and so on. Um, the students, they noticed that there was at the time um, a trade agreement which came to parliament to be ratified. Um, instead of debate and dialogue what they what they got was a 30 second ratification of the treaty so the students thought well hold on a second this is not democracy <clears throat> this is not what the parliament should be doing the parliament should not be rubber stamping agreements that have been um, largely shaped by china influenced by economic interests uh, on the other side of the island, that Taiwan is an island, um, there's something wrong with our democracy. So they, they occupied the legislative building, which makes up the parliament, and they said, we're not going to go away unless you accept to, um, <clears throat> to put this agreement to debate, to dialogue. So that moment was a forming moment because the students did not demand, um, you know, their, demand, their demands did not amount to any material concessions, like, you know, student fees, increasing student fees, as in many other movements around the world, Chile, the UK, Chris, and so on. But they demanded actually democratic procedures. They demanded 
um, proper ratification process and dialogue with people of Taiwan, which was unheard of. And in the accounts of some of the students participants in this movement, there was quite a lot of prayer, there was quite a lot about dialogue, there was quite a lot about humanization, there was quite a lot about um, the awakening of the, of, of the awareness of the Taiwanese people, conscientize us out, basically, conscientization. So we applied the Freirian analysis into the movement, the paper traveled, um, it got a uh, very warm acceptance in some circles within Taiwan. It got a lot of criticism in, in some other circles. A couple of weeks ago, Tao and I present our paper here at UEA. We got some questions that were um, not hostile, but as you can understand, they were very, very skeptical of um, our right to criticize the Taiwanese government. It's the kind of debate that you know we 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 really wanted to provoke. That movement um, really wanted to pursue dialogue. Really found this as an opportunity to um, create um, a rift with practices up to that point that were anti-dialogical. So they they were trying to implant a little bit of frere into the, the Taiwanese um, society. The next year, as it happened, I had another student who was very, very motivated as well. He came from a background in, in law. He had set up his NGO in Chechnya. And again, it was after week five when we started discussing prayer and his ideas that um, he kept coming to my office to see me and to discuss his ideas. And I remember at some point during, during the end of the semester, he formed his idea of setting up a law clinic in Chechnya. When I heard about it, I said, okay, great. And how could I help? What could my contribution be? And he said, Freire, you know Freire, you can help me set it up along these ideas. At the time, I really struggled to understand what he had in mind, but um, as we started convening and dialoguing and discussing, I realized that he took his prayer and really, uh, really seriously. So he saw um, a great deal of um, human rights discussion and uh, support that needed to take place in Chechnya that was not happening. And uh, he felt that um, having law clinics, talking to people about human rights and sticking up for them was um, a very good instantiation and application of prayer's ideas um, due to various issues which I'm not at liberty to discuss. The idea had to, uh, to be put on hold. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to give you an update in, in due course, but this is um, something that um, came with some um, uh, with some challenges, let's put it like this. Then during um, 2009 and for a few years after that, I had a project going uh, back and forth to Greece, um, exploring the student and the higher education movement. Greece at that time uh, had signed uh, two memoranda of agreement with its lenders, some banks basically and the European Union gave money to Greece to sign its death away. Teachers did not like this, they took to the streets and I kept going back and discussing their experiences and how we could understand the movement. And uh, what came out very clear was that those teacher activists, they, they were thinking and discussing in Freirian terms, not only in Freirian terms, they were using Naomi client's account, account about um, uh, dogma, capitalism. Some of them they were using more radical ideas, they were going back to Marx, some others they were using more um, recent ideas, they were going to Boaventura de Sousa Santos. But what was very clear was that Greece at the time was a very fertile ground for experimentation with alternative forms of supporting <laughs> Uh, of solidarity, teachers were um, sticking out for the students, they were providing 
um, all sorts of things that the students needed, you know, uh, food, clothes, they were organizing bazaars, you know, you know, to cover the students' basic material needs. Um, they were also talking about, you know, they were critiquing the state, where is the state, we're playing the role of the state, you know, what do we learn from this, what other spaces of solidarity are there, is there international solidarity movement, where can we get a helping hand. Um, a very uh, immersive um, experience and some application of, of Freire's ideas. Then very briefly, when I was in um, Fortaleza for the first time in September 2015, I happened to take part in a very big mobilization, which was against the media and their own media were playing it, were playing in um, brainwashing Brazilian society into accepting basically the rule of the media moguls. One of them was Bolsonaro and it was becoming at the time very clear, we're talking about 2015, it was becoming very clear that he was going to play a big role in um, Brazilian domestic politics. Little did we know that what this demonstration was trying to do was create an awareness, conscientization um, for um, process, um, for social processes that wouldn't be as dehumanizing. Little did we know that these processes would become um, so embedded and so de deep in the next six years that we'll be talking about um, the limitations of Brazilian democracy, we'll be talking about the grip that media hold on Brazilian society, things that Maria Angela and Maria de Jesus spoke about earlier. Um, and this, though, at the same time was a movement that paved the way for the anti-Bolsonaro protest that have been taking place in the last couple of years. So they were, if you wish, the, um, the workshops of solidarity. They were, they were the workshops of resistance against um, the, the rule of Bolsonaro. Um, using alternative labels, yes, absolutely. I think one of the um, um, side effects of colonization is that it has deprived us of alternative ideas, alternative conceptions, and alternative labels. Think about Arab Spring. Arab Spring is not a name that Arab Spring activists themselves gave to their movements. Think about the student protest in Chile, 2016, 2011, and many others in between. They were called uh, Chilean winter, I think. Again, that was not a label that was adopted by activists in the student movements. In fact, the latter was a label that was given by New York Times journalists, somewhere, you know, in, in the West as it happened. So we definitely need new, new labels, but even more than that, I don't think that we should consume ourselves. The question should not be about which one is the best label to describe this. Which one is the best label to, to relate to resistance against fascism, post-truth, Bolsonaro, Trump, and so on? I think the big question facing us is what processes, what discourses are there um, in disrupting the dominant narrative, the dominant discourse? I think this, this, should, this is the big challenge. So yes, as we are looking for different narratives and labels are part of uh, creating and talking about the, the uh, alternative narratives, we need those processes that will disrupt the dominant way we talk about movements, um, which is a byproduct of, of colonialism. And, and let me give you an example. When we talk about social movements, I think Marie de Jesus spoke about that very eloquently. When we talk about movements, when mainstream media talk about movements, they, they're one step away, one breath away from branding them as mavericks, as violent radicals, as outlaws, as outside of democracy, or even as directly opposed to democracy. This is the dominant narrative we need to disrupt. Social movements like the MST, 
like Black Lives Matter, like many other movements around the world, they are not those who are opposed to democracy, they are those that are democracy. And we need to disrupt this dominant narrative because it's catastrophic, it's, it's pernicious. Look what Bolsonaro does, look what Trump does, and look what main, mainstream media do. I have a lot more other examples that I could be using in relation to how social movements are demonized. I think we'll probably run out of time. I'll be happy to um, to develop some of these points further. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Spiros. Um, uh, we are actually uh, quickly uh, getting short of time. So I'm going to ask the panelists now to please try to uh, answer in at the most five minutes, if we can, because we have about 15 minutes. So five for each one, and then a quick closing moment. Uh, bearing in mind what Spiros has just said about uh, the future, you know, about what we need to do, what we must do, we are moving on now to the axis when we're going to speak about the future. So for Maria Jesus, I'd like to ask uh, the, the following questions. Uh, what is likely to happen as a result of what you are going to propose. You're going to talk about the, the banking education, the, the, the public system in Brazil, et cetera, and, uh, public system uh, in the MST especially. So uh, what is likely to happen as a result? And uh, how do we need to look at uh, what is happening? Is there another way that we can look at it? Maria Jesus? Estou, Maria Ângela, eu estou com aquele problema da tradução. Ah, tá, Maria de Jesus, é o seguinte, é, a pergunta é, é qual a relação entre a educação do Brasil, o MST, e os, as políticas do governo, a questão da, do, da, da educação bancária e a educação do campo, é, o que, que vocês esperam que, que, que aconteça nesse jogo de forças? E se é possível é, olhar de outra forma é, essa relação entre a educação brasileira, a educação do campo e as políticas de governo que estão sendo implementadas e muitas vezes é, de forma a sucatear. Y is translating the questions to Maria de Jesus. E eh, Maria de Jesus, a tentar responder em cinco minutos para dar tempo dos três palestrantes falarem. Feliz asking Maria de Jesus to give her answers in five minute tops. É, nós, é, enquanto o setor de educação do MST, temos uh, the, MS, the MST educational movement has two main objectives: to fight for the access and the right of the access of public educations in encampments and settlements. Since um, infantil, like kindergarten, up until uh, university level. The second aim is to build uh, our educational projects together with the ones who are involved uh, with, the, with uh, together with the ones taking part in the schooling system. Uh, students, uh, managers, families, organizations, uh, and everyone who is part of their reality. Throughout this uh, trajectory, we have been facing a lot of a lot of challenges. There are many uh, reforms happening in Brazil. We have uh, limited resources. We have some constitutional amendments, 95 constitutional amendments against social uh, rights uh, with regards to the, uh, uh, the health and education uh, areas in Brazil. So, 
Last year, 49% of the tax was to pay was to pay for Brazilian debts and education and um, and education was in the education area and the education both education and health area were not privileged. We have also faced we have also faced problems concerning in relação aos direitos dos professores, né? Hoje muitos direitos sendo negados, inclusive ameaças, né? Sobre é, gratificações que foram conquistadas, mas que agora querem retirar. E nós estamos na luta para garantir essa o financiamento público, né? De qualidade da da qualidade da educação. É, um outro aspecto para nós é o fechamento de escolas. No Brasil, no campo brasileiro e nas periferias das cidades, a educação, que é um direito humano fundamental, ele está sendo negado pelo fechamento de escola. Já são 103 mil. 103 mil escolas. São 103 mil escolas que estão sendo fechadas foram fechadas né, de 2003 para cá. Então, nós vivemos assim, um, um, um grande enfrentamento, um grande enfrentamento nessa questão. Mas, ao mesmo tempo, nós resistimos. E temos grandes experiências em nossas comunidades. Desde assim, os princípios da educação do campo, né, essa educação, o nosso projeto educativo, nos, nós nos reivindicamos herdeiros e herdeiras da educação construída pela classe trabalhadora. Desde a Comuna de Paris, né, que é a nossa primeira revolução né, proletária, desde essa nossa experiência da, da, da classe trabalhadora na Rússia, a Revolução Russa, em Cuba, né, na Nicarágua, na América Latina, com a educação popular, com Paulo Freire. Então, nós nos reivindicamos, nos reivindicamos, é, como construtores e lutadores e lutadoras, const, é, construtores, construtoras, lutadores e lutadoras, de uma, de um, por um projeto de educação emancipador, transformador da realidade, contra-hegemônico, que, de fato, é, fortaleça as lutas populares, o campo, né, enquanto projeto de vida, projeto de luta, projeto de, de construção, né, de, da dignidade dos camponeses e camponesas frente à, à desigualdade social. Então, a nossa luta, ela segue, né, temos uma, várias e várias experiências nos vários níveis de educação. Na, ciranda infantil, na educação infantil, temos as cirandas infantis, que funciona nas lutas, que funciona nos encontros, nas várias atividades do MST, que fortalece a participação nossa das mulheres no movimento, porque nós, nós, não é porque There nós estamos com nossas crianças pequenas. Many projects which we are involved and we take part in many different projects. We have fight for the schooling system for uh, our youth and adult learners, our worry and dedication towards the economics. Um, we understand uh, the uh, important connection between education and agriculture and the debate in terms of making education the basis of human education. We believe in education and, we be and I believe that all the ones involved in this group and in this Congress today, we understand education as a process of humanization and emancipation. We have uh, in our schools uh, worked with the matrices of education. How is it that we educate ourselves? Uh, we have learned 
uh, uh, through pedagogy and through history of education, we uh, are educated through our fights, our struggle, our collective and collaborative uh, experience by uh, the pursuit of uh, the, the, to be freed from the oppressed. We are educated by our work, uh, by our um, education, our culture, and our history. The way we understand history is based on how the, um, when we see ourselves and we understand ourselves as part of history, we understand as part of this uh, social community and we are together in this fight for uh, against the dehumanizing process because and based on capitalism. Capitalism explores and it clearly states, especially for the, the popular classes, the, bar the barbar. And we keep on the struggle. We are building on and we are working on the struggle. We want, we believe and we want a better, uh, better opportunities in society against this uh, we celebrate Paulo Freire because he inspires us to go on with the struggle and to the build of this new popular uh, group um, and the landless workers movement we understand and we uh, help movement is very inspiring your talk is extremely inspiring I'm, I'm very inspired by what but everything that you said and by the mystica everything i'm actually a bit emotional at the moment um i will ask maria angela and spiros uh, spiros please too um i'm not going to ask you any more questions because we are running out of time we actually began a little later so that's why we are running out of time um but I'd like you to speak a little bit about uh, what you wanted to, to say to, for as a closing, uh, or, or to say what you want to say, of course, but also closing the the closing your speech now. I'm not going to ask you any questions. Thank you. First, Maria and, Angela, and then and, speak. Thank you. And, and after that, uh, just a, a closing video, the Mexica, which is five minutes, and the questions, please, because you run out of time. Uh, they are more than welcome. Send it to us. Leave your name and email, and we we more more than happy to answer all your questions. Okay, I do apologize for this show, um, you know working against the clock approach. Thank you. Maria, Maria Angela, com você. Maria Angela. Então, é, eu só dizia assim, primeiro agradecer muitíssimo a oportunidade de estar aqui, aprendendo. Eu thank a lot for the opportunity of being here, and I have been learning a lot. Professor Spiros, Maria José, many, many thanks for this experience. We leave this opportunity, uh, having built different sorts of knowledge based on different experiences that we have heard. I just like to remember or to remind us of a uh, uh, conversation uh, between Paulo Freire and rural workers. He was talking about the virtues of educators um, in Brazil. Uh, there are two different temptations that we have to run away from. Uh, the first one is desesperança, the fact that we cannot be uh, not being hopeful. The fact that we look at the reality as is, thinking uh, about the number of times we have tried the same thing and we are still here. We have still have to explain the basics, why we have to uh, do the very same things again and again and again. Why are we here to just explain the basics to those who are already supposed to know what they meant? We have to run away from this. We have to uh, get rid of this temptation because um, because of that, we might lead to cynicism. Uh, 
um, which means that we cross our arms and that uh, we stop doing things that we were supposed to do. So we cannot uh, desesperançar, we cannot lack hope in terms of a better future and a more effective perspective. We, and we also have to believe that it's possible to build bridges and dialogue opportunities among different people and different cultures. Uh, in, when we think of Brazil specifically, we have to resist uh, the oppression towards public education. And we have to use our Lei de e Bases here in Brazil, our Brazilian um, guidance towards Brazilian education, and we have to resist against, uh, we have to resist the isolation. So we are not isolated. So this oppression tends to isolate people and make them, um, we have to focus and privilege the collective, the collaboration work, and we have to be open to uh, social movements and the communities. Uh, many thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, your closing speech. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Thank you. I want to say thank you very much to the organizers. Um, um, it's um, it's really important that we keep the door open to international solidarity and resistance. Um, it's very important that we maintain these discussions, this this dialogue. Some of you put in the discussion. It's really hard to talk to discuss to dialogue with a government that is not willing to listen, like Bolsonaro's government. Well, it's it's like that in most places I'm aware of. I don't have time to go into this, but what I'm trying to highlight is the need to um, to stick together internationally. Capital is reorganizing itself, rest assured, after the pandemic is going to bite with uh, even more force than ever before. And I think the um, um, teachings and the ideas of Freire, uh, resistance, solidarity, and um, collaboration are ever more important. Uh, again, muito obrigado. Um, uh, Lutemos. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to have a, a closing video, five minutes. And because you run out of time, we do apologize once, once again. Uh, please leave your name and email. We answer all your questions, we address to the panelists accordingly. Okay, thank you. I'm going to play now the video. Favor of video. Hello? Yes. Se o educar vai mais longe de braços com a poesia, vamos cantar Paulo Freire pela grandiosidade da sua pedagogia. The more the popular masses unveil the objective and challenging reality which they are part of, by also having the need to transform it, the more critically they insert themselves into it. Human beings are built through words, through work, 
through action and reflection upon action, not in silence. A psychoanalysis of oppressive action might reveal the false generosity of the oppressor as a dimension of the later sense of guilt. With the false generosity, he attempts not only to preserve an unjust and necrophilic order, but to buy peace for himself. It happens that peace cannot be bought. Peace is experienced in solidarity and loving acts, which cannot be incarnated in oppression. I am absolutely happy to be alive here today and, and the opportunity to have accompanied this march and movement which like other historical marches reveals a loving will to change the world, this march of the so-called landless. I would die happy if I heard about many other marches in Brazil marches of those who have no school the ones who fail at school the ones who uh, want to express their love and affection and cannot do it publicly um, the movements for those who uh, refuse to obey the ones to rebel and the ones who are and are prohibited from being I think, after all, that um, these marches are historical wanderings around the world, and the landless are today one of the strongest expressions of political and civic life in this country. Uh, that's why people speak against them, and even people who think they are progressive and who speak against them as if they were abusive, as if they were demonized or destroyers of the so-called order, not really. Right on the country, they are one more time uh, instead proving certain uh, theoretical assertion by political analysis that it's necessary to fight to obtain transformation. No, but one liberates himself by his own efforts alone. Neither is liberated by order. Liberation is a human phenomenon, and the process of liberation must employ the methods of dehumanization. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Spiros, Mariangela, Maria de Jesus, and all the collaborators, Alexandre. So the, everyone got involved in this beautiful project in the last three months, the long project, but I think it's a very successful. I'm really happy to see all of this going on and looking forward to the next possibilities between all of us. And I'm really pleasure to have all of you today. Thank you so much. Muito obrigado. Viva Paulo Freire! Fora Bolsonaro! Fora! Fora! <laughs> Eu também queria... Sem vocês, nada disso aconteceria. Parabéns aos panelistas. Muito obrigada. Thank you, professors, and thank everybody for Parabéns, obrigada. Thank you. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Tchau. A luta continua. Obrigada. Bye, bye. Thank you very much.
next time.